Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Car Q, and today I have two very, very special guests joining me for an exclusive interview. They are two gameplay engineers from Blizzard, Zach Metcalf and Dan Reed. Fellas, Zach, Dan, how are you guys today? Good, how are you? All right. Let's start with a little introduction so we know who you are and what you guys do. I'm Zach Metcalf from the Overwatch team, and I'm a gameplay engineer, like RQ said, and I've worked on lots of different things over the past couple of years. I've done, I spend a good deal of my time working on the workshop. I work on a lot of the hero loading. So like when you actually go into game, like actually getting the assets to load for your hero and stuff. And then I work like on a lot of our debug systems kind of behind the scenes that people don't really get to see, but it helps our other engineers and designers get their work done. So that's how I spend most of my time. Yeah. Okay. And you, Dan? Hey guys, I'm Dan Reed. I uh, work on the uh, Overwatch team for, I don't know, almost 10 years now. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, I guess before that it was Titan. So same, same team. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm a game and I developed a lot of our scripting technology, uh, worked a lot on weapons and abilities, and then recently I've been uh, spending time working on Workshop. Yeah, interesting. I know Dan, well, Dan just said he recently spends a lot of time in the Workshop. Are you doing the same as well, Zach, or are you kind of all over the place? I'm pretty much like, I spend about a third of my time dedicated to the Workshop, and then like two-thirds of my time is my other kind of responsibilities. Hmm. Yeah, we all have lots of hats we wear. <laughs> gotcha so what led you guys to the idea of building something like the workshop in overwatch was there inspiration from other games like mods and editors that you've seen in other big titles well we definitely had a lot of uh cool ideas that we saw floating around the community and people would say oh let's make this mode or like give this hero this thing and we thought well I mean, we don't have time to do all this stuff. <laughs> Gotta offload the work. We should, you know, try to give them something where they can really express themselves. And we, we've been really glad that we did because, mm -hmm. yeah, people have really knocked it out of the park. What were making people? What were people making before the workshop, though? Because it's like been so long. Oh God, custom games before the workshop was everything was the five hundred percent modes. People yeah. were trying to change everybody's cooldowns. People trying oh, yeah. to. Just people wanted to just balance it their own way. And you could only do so much with just kind of tweaking numbers. We really needed to give them a little bit more like interactive power with the rest of the game. And that's like what Workshop really gives them. I'm a complete noob that knows nothing about programming or how this stuff works. So how would you explain how the Workshop works to someone like me? Like, how do you give that sort of... um? capabilities to the community is there some sort of engine or code that you make public that you have to set parameters on your end and then we tweak those on our end yeah that's pretty much exactly how it works is that either we have either we have numbers that we kind of expose and that you guys can read and write to those numbers and it essentially affects how the game works like cooldown numbers or like we kind of give you little function calls what we call them actions where you just essentially call an action and it has some event or has some just expected result that happens once you've done that yeah so all of um all of overwatch is well at least the the game portion of overwatch is coded in c plus um, plus a lot of our, our tools are in c sharp uh, but we have a scripting system that sits on top of c plus plus that runs a lot of the high level logic in our game uh, called state script and then uh, workshop actually sits on top of that um, recently, I, I did some optimizations so that Workshop does interface directly with C++, uh, and it does make things a lot faster. Um, but a lot of a lot of our game is done in StateScript, so we had to connect StateScript with uh, Workshop uh, in order to get a lot of the functionality that is there. So, yeah. So a lot of what's happening just is that when you guys run Workshop actions, you're actually interfacing with the other parts of our StateScript systems that interact with heroes like if you call like the resurrect the resurrect action in workshop then you're actually going through parts of the logic that mercy would use to actually bring someone back based on what you said a lot of overwatch like you said is in c plus plus so this sort of leads into my next question are there any tips for beginners that are looking into creating something in the workshop any sort of programming knowledge any programming languages you should know, or is that not really necessary since the workshop is a lot of click and drop since it's built with a clickable interface? With 
Like we have within the workshop, it's, a, it's essentially an event driven system where you can create rules that are triggered when events happen in the game. Like if you take damage or you deal damage or, or events that simply run every frame, but within, like within a rule, within a little block of code, it does act a little bit like C and C++ where stuff will execute in order, but it's not quite exactly the same as a programming language. So I wouldn't say that you actually need like I don't like the whole point of it is that you don't necessarily need to be an expert in programming to mm -hmm. hop into workshop. Yeah, absolutely. it's really yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, you you can absolutely jump into a workshop with, without prior programming experience. Uh, there's there are a lot of uh, examples that we have, um, starting pretty simple like the uh, floor is lava example. Um, hopefully, you should be able to you know sort of start looking at these examples and work up you know from one to nine. I think they're numbered. Uh, they are in the presets uh, menu, and hopefully you should be able to go through them and sort of you know start to see how they work. Maybe experiment some with them, like start off by changing some of the numbers just to get a sense of like how things work, and then maybe start moving some actions around, uh, disable some actions, start to see like how it all fits together. I, honestly, the process is very experimental. Um, you're not going to hurt anything, so just get in there and, and start messing around and see what happens and over time, you'll slowly start to understand. It's it's a long process though. Like learning anything is yeah. a long process and workshops, no exception there. And really you just, you just want to start small. Like you don't want to come right into it and saying like, I want to, I want to redesign absolutely and make an entire new game mode. Like you want to come in and say like, let's say every time I get a kill, I'm going to gain 10% of my ult charge. Like just start small and just with a little random thing like that, and then start building those building blocks until you have gained enough knowledge to take on something much more challenging. And you can always, you can always, uh, you can grab someone's mode and actually see how they did it too. So if there's a cool workshop mode and you're like, oh, I want to make something like that. You can always just start with their mode, see what they did, make some changes, modify it until eventually you've, you've created something unique. Okay. To continue on the beginner tips thing. Do you think there's some sort of streamlined process that's easier for beginners? Like, for example, obviously I make video content and whenever people ask me what my workflow is like, I always say, start with the idea and script first uh, and audio first, because the I use the audio voiceover stuff and build your video footage off of that, because I find that works best for me. So I guess to reiterate, my question is if there's something like that for the workshop, because it can be quite intimidating for beginners to see all these drop down options they can tweak and they don't know where to start. Right. Yeah, kind of uh, like you, kind of like you say, like you build it into you build videos from individual layers. Like layers. I would say that you do the same thing with workshop, except for instead of layers, you build little building blocks. So, for instance, don't try to essentially script everything right off the bat and just make something totally brand new from scratch. Like start start small, add in building blocks, like do one little feature at a time until you can integrate everything together to kind of make your big new mode. Because there are there are some incredibly complicated modes out there and mm -hmm. they don't just appear like they they definitely start small like with building blocks and go from there yeah a lot of times people will want to make prototypes where they're not they're not trying to make the full fleshed out mode or anything they, they just want to test some particular part of it uh and and people work differently some people actually do want to sort of create everything all at once um some people uh will, will actually plan it all out first and they'll you know write stuff down you know maybe take some notes somewhere and really plan it out. Some people just get in there and just start, you know, going without thinking a lot about it. I, I think there's lots of different ways you can develop stuff. So it's more of, it comes down to personal style, I think. It's definitely experimenting too. Like just try it. It's going to be hard, but like once you've actually made something, it, it should be, it should feel really rewarding. At least that's how it feels for us. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, in the workshop, I'm aware there's some sort of way to import or write code outside of the parameters there, right? Can you explain that, what that is for everybody? So we essentially have our own text format that's essentially copy-pastable from Overwatch itself. So if you're on PC, you can actually copy your entire, either just your workshop script or your workshop script, as well as all of your custom game settings. And you can essentially save it to a text file and you can edit it on the text file and share it with your friends or just even save backups, which is something I would recommend doing. Then you can essentially take that text format and just paste it right back into the game. So that's a good way to, like if you are someone who works better in text as opposed to like to the visual building blocks within our editor itself, 
then just copy it to text and work from there and then paste it back once you're ready to go. Oh, that's really convenient, actually. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we always try to take cues from the community. The uh, the idea for copying and pasting the text actually came from them. Uh, and, you know, we we, we want to give people the tools that, that they want in order to, to make what they want to make. Mm -hmm. So keep those ideas coming. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of ideas, what are some of your favorite community made workshops or what has impressed you the most so far? There is there's some amazing there's some amazing modes out there. And I think do you do you have favorites, Dan? Because I, I have some I could list off. Several. Oh, I mean, probably the uh, the one that sort of uh, th there was one that came out I think called Last Man Bouncing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is just it was incredibly like unique and i would have never thought of that mode in a million years kind of thing that's yeah, that's, that's kevlar that's kevlar's mode yeah. and i think when i that's that was one of my very favorite modes early on and i think when i saw that that's when i knew workshop was something special <laughs> yeah that was I, that was in the beginning of the workshop right with a lot less tools at the time right that was very few much fewer tools it was a lot kind of more difficult to work with like we've added several quality of life features since then and even like it was it was a great arcade mode and it definitely like it really showed what the community was capable of doing if we gave them the right right tools. We just saw one today called uh, Overwatch Fight Club, I think it's I think currently in development. Um, but it's that's sort of another cool thing people have realized you can do you can make you know a side scrolling brawler, you know. Uh, so. I got a couple more that are worth naming like. Uh, yeah, at least, at least if you're in, if you're doing while you wait, like if you're in queue for competitive, I'm pretty sure everyone has probably played Seda's 1v1 arena mode, which is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, there's actually some incredible new modes out there. I know that PMA Jellies has basically remade Pictionary mm -hmm. like Tried entirely, that. which is amazing. Uh, I know, I know Kevlar has also been recently working on P talking and nobody explodes. Which what? if you that would I, look really impressive. It's yeah. it's the modes and there's even like so Urod has made a map editor basically where they can place kind of fake walls around and you can like create ramps and stuff. I've seen some videos on it, but people are coming up with just absolutely incredible things and mm -hmm. it's it's really amazing to see what they do with it. No, oh, that's awesome. I'll have all the uh, codes of the ones they mentioned in the description below. Do you guys have any sort of final tips or things to say to the community? I guess the last thing I would want to say is like, don't do it alone. Like get involved with communities on the forums. There's a bunch of discord communities out there where people have been messing with around like a lot of the stuff. Cause a lot of programming is kind of collective knowledge that other people have learned over the past years that they've been doing this. So like if you're struggling, find other people who are involved with workshop and kind of get involved and see what they're doing. And you'll probably learn a ton just from talking with them. It's incredibly rewarding to uh, see what people can make with workshop. Like we, you know, th that was always sort of our goal and our hope is that, you know, we, we could share a little bit of the experience of being a game developer with everyone. And uh, it, it seems like that's worked so far. Um, and I hope it continues to work and that people continue to have fun with it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the same thing for me. Like for me, workshop is like, it reminds me of why I got into this in the first place. Like being able to use tools, use an engine that has been created for you and use assets that someone has already built for you and kind of create your own mode or just essentially build the game the way that you want to play it. And mm -hmm. when you share it with others and kind of get excited about it, like, oh, yeah, that's so sure. rewarding. I, I even feel good talking to you guys about it. I want to make something now. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for your time and your insight. Appreciate it. For everybody else watching this, see you guys next time.